entry box. And my good buddy qualified on day one, Chris, the magic man, Melon. Thanks, Carl. Good to be back again. And another top match coming up. Yeah, Neil's Fain has played 4 1 3. And Billy First Thorpe Neil's Fain's to break. has played 4 1 1. You know, on form, you would put Neil's Fain slight favourite in a race to five. But we also know what can happen. Well, lost the cue ball slightly there on the break. Neil's normally parks that cue ball dead. It's first glance, it's a bit of a messy table. I mean, in defence to Neil's, it did get kicked. Albin Ocean leads for Tunski on table two, two racks to zero. So Albin, he's turning around his day a little bit. There you see one of our shot clock referees. Well, Billy first here with a tough shot. Not a bad cue ball, but unfortunately, he has left the two. Just depends how straight it is into the corner as to whether he can hold for the three ball. Yeah, this is not an easy shot. Queuing off the rail. Stanchion called. And he queued it that well. That he followed it straight in. Ball in hand. Yeah, and Chris, we, we don't just talk about the top four. Obviously, we know the top four go on and play the semi finals tonight, but we've got a little battle for the bottom spot because, of course, if you finish last in the group, you are out of the tournament. You do not come back, you're gone. Yeah, and it looks like it's between Billy Thorpe, Botunski and Darren Appleton at this moment in time. Yeah, Darren Appleton's played 5-1-1 and one, one, and his last match is against Fatunski, so that is brewing up to be something special. Yeah, and I think Fatunski's uh, only played three games so far, so... Well, Billy Thorpe's made a bad error there. Hewed right across the ball. Well, Neil's 
looks in good form. Good position there on the eight ball to get on the nine. There it is, Neil Spion takes the first rack in this crucial match for Billy Thorpe. He needs to win this. Just having a look at table two here, holding at the table, leading two racks to one against Misko. Really good positional shot there on the two ball. And he seems to got his game back a little bit, does Albin, it went missing for a day or two. It's all about confidence. The game's easy when you're winning or when things are going your way. But the moment you start missing, it's a big struggle. two ball rattled but it did go on to fall in the pocket so a little bit fortunate there from Alvin. Rack number two, Billy Thorpe to break, trailing one rack tonight. So USA's Billy Thorpe, he was uh, one of two guys from across the pond to represent USA in this year's event. Chris Robinson was here on day one but unfortunately he finished last so He's out of the event. Good break there from Billy. Controlled the cue ball well. I think the one ball does go into the top corner pocket. Well, that's a good shot. He'd have liked both balls to go in at once there. He wouldn't have minded, but he's still in prime position. Everything in the open. Well, that's a poor shot from Billy there. There's no real reason to use two rails. He's landed pretty straight, stretching. He's going to go get his ball. extension. Yeah, if one thing I have kind of been keeping an eye on with Billy's game is his he does have a tendency to make things a little bit difficult for himself yeah for me he just tries to spin that cue ball a little bit too much instead of trying to make it easy <coughs> when he's in full floor he's a delight to watch Nice little shot there, just avoiding the corner pocket. Probably want to play this off two rails. Maybe one. Needs it to slow up. And that's a real poor shot. A real, real poor shot. In the game of pool, when you're coaching people, you always tell them that there's always a case for over it in the ball or under it in the ball. And in that position, there was a case for under it in the ball by a good six feet. Great jump shot there from Billy. Going to have a little tester on the eight ball, though. I feel he's going to cut it into the top corner pocket. Automatic position for the nine ball. Digging down on this a little bit, make it a little bit tougher. Oh, it's there. Good shot from Billy. And this will give him a good confidence booster. Yeah, that jump shot had to land the cue ball on top of the object ball to pot it. And 
It's 1-1 one, one here on table one. Yeah, I think what we're going to see, Carl, in a lot of these matches late on this evening, they're all going to get close because a lot of the players will be tired. They've been here three days. Your Kelly Fishers, your Albins, your Neils. They've played nearly 200 racks between them. Well, 200 racks each. Just looking at the other table, Albin Alshon's leading three racks to one. Misko at the table with a, an open rack. Not a gimme one ball, but if he makes it, you would think he'll run out. Number three, Neil's fine to break, one rack all. Neil's fine has been breaking pretty consistent so far in this event, straight down the middle with power, trying to pack the cue ball in the centre of the table. Well, they didn't control it great, that rack, but... He's still got a clear shot at the one ball. Yeah, that's my favourite type of break to watch. I like it when the players, you know, unleash the power on the break and get the balls moving. I was speaking to a couple of people earlier, Carl, and I was saying that it'd be nice if we could get the speed gun back on the break just to see how hard people are hitting them. Yeah, I do agree. It's been spoke about for a while and just another, if anything, another little gimmick to the game. They do it in tennis, don't they, on the serve? Maybe you could even bring in a little, little penalty issue if you don't hit them a certain speed. Like you have to buy everyone a round of drinks or something. It looked wide, Chris, all the way up from the overhead camera. Yeah, that's a bad, bad mistake from Neil's Fion. Had a lot of area to play with there. He could have missed the corner pocket to the right by about six inches and that ball still would have dropped. He has made quite a few unforced errors today as Niels yeah and he did on the first couple of days and I was thinking about this and you know what I suppose what you got to remember is it's 12 hours of pool he's made the top four twice and you know he's playing six matches a day so I suppose you're entitled to miss some balls yeah we'll give him the benefit of the doubt like I said, he's played nigh on 200 racks. Bound to make mistakes. And he's going to be playing more racks, I would think, because he's he's played four and he's won three, so he's he's in a good spot. But Albin Ocean has got a couple of balls left to go four and up, so after a shaky start, he's back in the groove. I must say his mindset today has been a lot better. And what a miss that is. What a miss that is. Why on earth is Billy hitting that ball so hard to screw over to the side rail? No reason. Just screwing it at the centre of the table. Wasn't a tough seven ball. And he may rue that mistake. Yeah, and these mistakes are... They're actually good for our good friend Darren Appleton because... The last thing he needs is Billy winning this match. Because they're himself, Darren and Fatunski have only won one match so far. Well, what Darren needs is Billy to get beat but not win a lot of racks. That'll help Darren. But there's still a long way to go. 
and everything can change. Yeah, so Neil's firing, steals that rack in the end. Break, Go and make yourself break. a cup of tea or coffee. We're going to have a short little break. Guaranteed that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket? What a beautiful shot that was! What a beautiful execution! Look at this! Oh my gosh! Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best ball balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF range of ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My Aramith, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. We are in Milton Keynes for the inaugural Predator Championship League pool. 19 of the world's greatest pool players are competing. And at the moment, we've got USA's Billy Thorpe about to break. He's trailing 2-1 against Niels Fion. Good break there from Billy. Lost the cue ball a little bit. I'm just wondering if he's going to be tempted with the bank on the one ball because where the pink four ball is, if he does hit the pink, it'll go in. Well, he's made it straight in. And he's got a good chance here. Just needs to bear down on these important shots. Is uh, Losing the cue ball a little bit. Yeah, nothing's going in clean either. That usually tells you a little story. Needs to stay still on this shot. You see, it's pretty straight. Uh-oh. Well, I can't believe he's tried to nudge the four. I'm pretty sure he could have rolled that dead weight and took a more difficult four ball. Still got a shot at it, but it's very tough. He's got to get the, the cue away 
And he has. Really good shot there from Billy. And he's landed nicely into the corner pocket for the six ball. Well, he's been a bit fortunate in this rack. But you need a bit of fortune. And this eight and nine ball. And he will tie the match up. Fortunski on table two. Doesn't look too happy. But Billy Thorpe. He's a lot happier now. This match is tied to Raxall. So, Chris, um, I believe a few of your friends are not happy with my new nickname for you. Chris the Magic Man Melly. Yeah, obviously. My nickname came from the English pool world. But there's a lot of people over in the Philippines that don't agree with my nickname, The Magician. So, to try and keep people a little bit happy... We're going to do a poll. We're going to do a poll. And this is how the poll's going to work. Me and Chris have come up with three nicknames. Have we? Yes. Uh, well, ish. And, well, we haven't actually. So if you have got a good nickname for Chris Mellon, I have said Magic Man. But if anybody's watching and you're on my Facebook, send me a message with what you think we can start calling Chris Mellon. I like Magic Man, his friends don't. So let's see what he can come up with. Yeah, and the reason behind it is obviously the great Efren Reyes has the nickname The Magician. So instead of upsetting a few people, <laughs> I thought I'd try and be fair to everybody. Massive break there by Niels. And he could be unfortunate if that sits right on the knuckle, but I think he can make it. But does the two ball go? What about the Keithley killer? You've got Joshua Killer Filler. You're from Keithley. The Keithley killer. <laughs> There's a fair view of them in Keithley. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure that would work, Carl. But I'm sure we'll come up with something. Nice shot there by Niels. Played that with a lot of left-hand spin so that when he connected with the four ball, after the one, the cue ball would slide up the table. We may see Niels play a hook here behind the three. Just depends what kind of angle he's got. There you see the side spin take effect so that the cue ball will get closer Sorry. towards Expansion, the two. <coughs> so Albin Ocean won that match over on table two. And Albin Ocean is finished all his group matches. He's won three out of his six. That's a really good shot there by Niels. I wasn't sure that the two ball passed the eight, but played a nice shot there. Could play this off the eight. Oh, and he's played a bad shot there. He's caught the three ball too thick, which in turn hasn't made the eight ball into the corner. Can Billy play off the three slowly and hold it off the eight? Oh, what another poor, poor shot that is from Billy. He had a huge target there. He just seemed to get down really quickly. Like five, ten seconds into the shot there. And that was just one of them times where you need to compose yourself and make sure you're playing it the correct way. Yeah, it's as if the pressure is starting to get to these pool players because... Overall, the standard of play has not really quite been there, has it? And then the three ball just drops to Neil's delight. Yeah, and it's a good job the cue ball pulled up because another roll, he may not have had a shot at this six ball. Sneaked in the back door.
But Niels is going to have, a, have an easy seven, easy eight. Position to the nine isn't guaranteed if the eight ball is sat right into the eight, into the corner pocket. He could hit the knuckle, which doesn't offer an easy positional shot. May have to draw the eight ball out. He's just looking to see where he can leave the cue ball to give himself the best option. We're probably going to see Niels play rail first here. That way he's going to swing the cue ball out. Needs to be careful. If he hits this too thick, he could land on top of the nine. And if he hits it too thin, well, it could end up near the side pocket. Is it a little thin? This isn't a gimme. But I'm sure he'd have taken it before. He played the eight ball. He's a great shot maker, is Niels, and this shouldn't pose any problems for him. Good shot there from Niels, steadied the ship, and he wins the fifth round. Over on table two, we've got a very interesting matchup. Fatunski versus Appleton. Appleton's played 5-1-1. Fatunski's played 4-1-1. So that is a very, very interesting matchup starting over there. Because whoever wins that one will obviously move on to two wins. And it's Dazzy's last match. Fatunski has got two games back to back over there. He's playing Darren Appleton and then he will stay on that table and play Niels Fyen. Well, the other thing, Carl, is that Darren's frame wins. He's pretty good, even though he's played one more match than everybody else. He certainly needs to beat Misko if he's to stand any chance of staying in this tournament. Otherwise, it's going to come down to Kelly Fisher <coughs> and Billy Thorpe. Rack number six, Billy Thorpe to break, trailing three racks to two. Yeah, does his, he likes his stats, so I'm sure he's been working it out before this match. He'll know the importance, and he won his first game. Billy Thorpe scratches in the side. Yeah, poor break there from Billy to scratch in the side without getting kicked. His, his poor break, as we can see. The cue ball comes straight into the centre pocket. Doesn't get touched by anything. And that isn't unlucky. That's a poor break. Yeah, going back to the stats with Darren, he, uh, he certainly knows his pool and his snooker. He's probably been having a cup of tea, smoking about 10 Lamberts <laughs> and working everything out. So we've had a few messages for your nickname. Some of them, of course, I can't repeat. And some are off your friends. And I definitely can't repeat them ones. Someone says the Magnificent. magnificent. It's not bad. Chris, you don't seem convinced with that one. Yeah, I'll just leave it up to the, uh, the people at home to decide. All I can say is I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> Going back to the match with Niels, he's in prime position. And this one good positional shot onto the seven, doesn't want to land straight on it. Nice little angle. It would be better drawing off a couple of rails like that. And that leaves him. Well, he didn't want to hit the eight ball. It left him a little tricky, but you still would expect him to get out. Wanted to come above the eight ball. We can see there, he just flicks it, which in turn leaves the cue ball on the rail. Makes this a little bit more difficult. And we have seen a few players this week miss these kind of shots. Niels missed a similar shot in the World Cup of Pool Final against me and Darren Hill Hill. And that isn't one of Niels' best. He's under it that by a long, long way. 
And all this has come from that one poor positional shot to get onto the seven. It can still get out, but it's a lot more difficult than it should have been. For me here, he's just got to cut the eight ball in and take a long nine. Take your medicine. We all know he's a great shot maker and he can make the nine without a problem. Doesn't want to try too much with the eight. And what a shot that is. He's done unbelievably well there to avoid the centre pocket. It'll be a relief. Neil's firing. Two minute break. Taking that rack. Yeah, great shot on the eight ball. And he's now on the hill. He's leading this match 4 2. And we'll be back after this short little break. Guaranteed that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket? What a beautiful shot that was! What a beautiful execution! Look at this! Oh my gosh! Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table and just hit the ball. Day three, group three. Things are starting to get interesting, Christopher, aren't they? Darren's in a little battle on table seven. two. Yes, Billy seven, Thorpe three. looks a broken man in his chair there, four. trailing 4-2. Against the man about to get this rack underway, the Terminator, Niels Fyan. has been very fortunate there very very fortunate what a strange break all the balls seem to be on either side cushion apart from the nine and he's landed a perfect angle on the two to get over for the four it's all about this first shot if he makes this then this is pretty ABC for Niels
Yeah, well, Niels runs these balls. I've got some more information on the Jeanette Lee Legacy Fund. Matchroom Pool are doing a raffle, so you can go to matchroompool.com and the prizes include a Money Cannot Buy Experiences and Top of the Range Merchandise. Moscone Cup VIP experience including tickets and a chance to play against the player. Predator P3 Revo Q. Also the balls used in the Championship League Pool Final. I'm sure we'll get some of the guys to sign them, or girls. Zoom coaching with Alex Laley or Jeremy Jones. Kamui Chalk and Tipset. A Q signed by all CLP winning group players. Chris the Magic Man's Stanchion Melling's Bell. name will be on that because he won day one group. Also a US Open season ticket pass. So go to matchroompool.com and enter the raffle. Well, wow. that's a bad mistake there from Niels. He had a pretty simple run out and he messed up position from the four ball to the five little bit unfortunate to be stuck on the nine but nevertheless a poor shot yeah Billy Thorpe still in this match of course he's fighting to live another day in this event if you don't finish in the top four your next goal is just to make sure you're back tomorrow this is the beauty of this event the players are getting lots of matches Lots of table time. And this nine ball to pull to one behind. 4-3, Neil's firing. Billy's back at the races. And Billy will be breaking to try and make it for all. There you see the current ladies world nine ball champion, Kelly Fisher. Lost in the final last night. Also put up a good showing on day one. And she's doing well here is Kelly. She's played 4-1-2. So she's in the thick of it. She is coming up. On table one next. She will play Billy Thorpe. She's got back-to-back -back matches on table one. So, yeah, yeah we were just looking at the other table there. Carl and Darren had a great chance. And he's missed a sixth ball into the corner pocket. It wasn't a gimme, but I did expect him to make it. That was to go 2-0 up, and that would have been a, a big nail in the coffin for Misko. And Misko's just made the sixth ball. So it's getting pretty tense out there. We're going to see some twitching, some head movement. And I'm sure we're going to see some great pool. Billy the banker Thorpe gets rat number eight underway and this looks useful Christopher especially if that two ball goes right over the corner how do you like these Carl well I'd have rather the two had gone in me because <laughs> I'd have probably messed position up from two to three as where from one to three looked even I could manage that Well, you've been out of the game for three or four years, Carl, and uh, I think I'd fancy you to clear this up. Cheers, pal. Fortunski's day goes from bad to worse. He just misses a long nine ball. And Darren Appleton slots it in to go 2-0 up. So Fortunski was the, you know, he was one of the top players yesterday. And now he's under the cosh. And we saw this. Yesterday we Albin Ocean. He lost in the final to a great, great player. What was he called? The Magic Man. <laughs> I knew you liked that nickname. Yeah, he's gonna be disappointed there is Fotunski. It was a very makeable nine. Billy with a four, six, seven, and nine. 
to go hill hill with Neil's fine. Yeah, and Chris, what's interesting about this is if Darren does go on to beat Pachunski and Billy ends up winning this match, Pachunski's in a little bit of a tricky spot. Well, if you remember, Carl, it, the same thing happened yesterday. Alvin had to win his last match against Ralph to stay in. It was a do-or-die match. And Darren has just broke dry. Billy Thorpe ties this match up. We're going to have a one-rack sudden death shootout. We're well, just looking at the other table, Carl, and Potunski will be absolutely sick because he's missed a very, very makeable nine ball. And Darren's broke dry and left him straight in on the one. And he's just missed a straight in two ball. Wow, it's all going off. The pressure's starting to show. Well, there's no pressure when you're sat in here, Christopher. No, you're quite right. I've never missed a ball from the commentary box. Is Darren going to run out? We've seen a quite a few times today players in winning positions and somehow messed it up. So, Viv, uh, referee for this match, she's just making sure she gives the best possible rack Final for this rack. hill hill last rack oh. Niels will be breaking and he, he has been breaking very good yeah he's, he's, for me he breaks the best out of everybody here he parks a cue ball dead near enough every break just like that and if he hasn't got a shot here, he's so unlucky. Well, he's got a thin clip. And he's guaranteed the snooker, should he clip it and send the white back down the table. But he's very unfortunate not to have an easier chance. Yeah, so there's going to be a little bit of drama here. Billy's going to get back to the table. That's all you can ask for when you're sat in your chair and you're not breaking. Well, he can clip that one, Carl, and if he does, the one ball's going to hit the two. Push out. Push out, hold. Niels plays at the push shot. Well, that's an interesting shot, Carl. I'm not sure what he's planning at first look he's obviously seen something that he can play should Billy put him back in but I'm not sure what it is well he's Billy looking at the pot does it go well he's walked down here and looked at something so I don't know well that is unforgivable what Neil's firing has just played That is probably the worst shot I've ever seen Niels play. Well, he left him a tempter, that's for sure. And Billy's answered that question. So, can Billy Thorpe hold himself together? Does Billy Thorpe know the importance of this rack? I'm sure he does. That was a nice shot. He's left himself a lovely angle just to stun over to the side rail. Yeah, and for me, you've got to stun below the six ball here. He's digging deep, so he might be going above it. Just about okay. Very close to his work. Christopher, this is a big, big rack for Billy Thorpe because he stays on this table to play Kelly Fisher, and this will give him the confidence he needs. Nice shot there, controlled that well. 
Well, Neil's firing will be absolutely beside himself after that push out. I do not know what he was playing unless he was trying to leave a jump shot. But he could clip that one ball and I'm very surprised he didn't play it. And Billy Thorpe is two balls away from winning his second match and getting himself away from the danger. Billy Thorpe with this nine ball to turn this group on its head. It's drama at its best. And it's there, Billy Thorpe with a 5-4 victory over the Terminator. Billy Thorpe will be playing Ladies World Nine Ball Champion next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 